Hello and welcome back to another episode of Phoenix Point. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our blind playthrough on Legendary Difficulty. It's been a quite enjoyable ride so far and uh, we have defended our own base. Might as well go to the next haven, which is Mazuvari. Uh, that is currently under attack and we got an attack strength of 16. We're bringing the prime crew here. Apparently we can't re repair, but those are just distractions. I think we will be fine. I would give you a laser pistol if I could. I promise. I definitely would. We need a pistol with a high effective range or a sniper rifle that only costs two instead of three but we uh, actions but we don't have that yet so apologies for it uh, besides i have successfully created uh, a blast resistance w uh, vest and that wasn't even as expensive as you would have thought so that's uh, some toys that we're going to uh, deploy for all of them but a little bit later Let, now let's deploy the squad and kick some alien ass good we landed and wow we can already see <laughs> a first enemy on that side and something coming up here great that is exactly what you want to see when you're starting a mission Well, I tell you what. This guy is already bleeding. Very good. So where is Grell? Can we move in? There's another one. Yeah, no, we gotta be careful. Now we gotta be careful. And we also got to deal with this guy. Moves over. It's the torso. All right, quick aim. God damn it, we're already blowing a lot of our abilities in that very first engagement. Quick aim again. Torso is gone, which is very helpful for us. Moves over here. Is the front line on that end? Uh, 
Um, how about we're moving to here? Letting loose a war cry. That affects all three. And then we're going around the corner to not be targeted. I believe we're seeing three enemies there. It's just the magazine. Oh, I have not known. <laughs> the failure. I have not brought the actual the actual magazine uh, the actual gun with me all right way too many enemies i'll take the high ground and we'll leave it as is. Holding position. I seriously did not bring the grenade launcher with me. That also explains why we had quote unquote three grenade launchers. We did never have them. Yeah, jumping down, standing in the open is not a really good strategy, my dude. So we have at least two more aliens here, and about four or five on my side. Not 100% sure why that is force level 18, but I suppose we're going to find out sooner or later. Good, there was another champion in there. Oh no. Oh no, you hate to see it, right? It's time the true bloom, uh, boom blast. One. Two. Two. 
three. Shout again. We're going to see whether or not uh, that is necessary. One. Two. Three. Four. Need to do some good paralyzation. I don't want to let them awake. All set. Ready to fire. One. Two. Three. That's a kill. Four. And Dilly overwatches this direction this time. Still got one more enemy over there. Or cry into no action. Is this a civilian? Yep, it is. Never mind. Ten points of damage, quite respectable. I hope we can get one of uh, these guys down. to 10 hit points right 14 okay that is disgusting he's potentially live another turn Guys, you could also <clears throat> just throw your worms onto the disciples of Anu. I'm just pointing that out. It's an opportunity. You don't always need to focus fire on me. There's still a disciple here. And there are definitely more enemies here. Dozens of worms, yet again. Not sure why exactly we're panicked.
Good. Free reload. One. Two. Three. That's a kill. Four. Good, I want my action economy back, which is why we're doing exactly that. We got all of the will point uh, will points ready. Moves over here one. I'm here. Two and three to move all the way in and then oh I figured we have war cry but it was dash the symbols look so similar oh what we can do though Four is seconds. There we go. Free weapon exchange and yeah, just in case you need the neut uh, neutralizer. The worms are still fine. Good. War cry very much needed. One, two. Moving into full cover over here. Good. We still have a few enemies on this side. It is not becoming any better. Good, we're moving over here. I think we're okay. Not a perfect turn, but okay. Cry definitely is helpful. There's an alien in here. Just gotta be careful. Um, 
tell you what um, Shattered Realm is still out of actions Ian the Butcher owns as well I don't even know why what's the problem here keep it together operative Exactly, right? Keep it together, operative. up here keep it together operative oil moves up here oil solves the problems of grell grell takes the safe bet just eliminates this guy So here we have used uh, the shout, so everything is good. Ready. So Ola himself Trying to could actually benefit. Takes up an independent assault rifle. We move out of range. One. We want the fat state when it is maximum blown. Yep, because then it's easier to hit it. We're out of ammo officially, which is never good. Dash up to here. Move closer. Oh. This guy is under control. Hmm. Hmm. We do have the problem with his friend, though. Who will likely explode unless we find a way of dealing with it. I don't have a great idea. don't have ammunition I need to start packing more pistol ammo mm. yeah we can't ready an attack unfortunately only thing that I could do is get into the smoke here <coughs> okay come on one more hit shotgun oh, thank you Oh, 
the fog. I think it is the fog uh, that's removing willpower. Uh, tell you what, this here is free. Don't need the big fat guns at the moment. Shattered Realm, who in return moves up and teaches this guy a lesson. Moving up, paralyze the worm for many, many, many more rounds. Ian moves up. And just like that disables the torso. Okay, we do have dash, but we do not have the war cry. War cry is so important. I will move to here. Extending the shield. still panicked not a good situation to be in but I can't change it right now the battle is putting quite a bit of strain on us but to my understanding there are only two more aliens left over this guy here and the one next to us well no it's three. wrong because that's a civilian good we're beginning to slowly but surely move forward Absolutely love the shields. Five by five. We're going to stay out of line of sight, just like here. The 
civilian is going to be our scout. Our eyes and ears. Billy moves into a sniper position. moves up as well. Good. Maybe, if they are cards right, we can paralyze one more. Maybe not. Maybe it's just the end of the map without us even doing anything. Okay, cool. The civilians give extra XP, I see. I see, okay. Now, sometimes it definitely makes sense to have like a stringent standard build. I would say for uh, the, the ones in the front line, I would use propeller legs. Definitely heavy and assault for, uh, for well, definitely he heavy plus propeller legs uh, because then they do have war cry and uh, can melee attack. So having that multiple times would be helpful. Okay, so that was quite helpful. Uh, what I have forgotten is to take the gun with us. Sorry, little green, you go back to the standard, the bare minimum. And we're going to use the big fat grenade launcher here. Killing an enemy grants a will point. Onslaught was good, surprisingly good, because sometimes you need that. Good, we're not taking extra um, grenades with us yet. How difficult uh, or how how heavy is that melee gear that's weights too the problem that i have with no actually we don't have the problem with him he can switch around freely there's literally not a problem with him other than not being able to carry everything I would like to get this for two extra speed. But yeah, the question is, do we want a normal melee weapon or do we want the paralysis? He has the legs, so it would make sense to give it to him. Yeah, something along those lines would make sense. But I also like the grenades. That was quite uh, quite helpful when it, when we could use it. Hmm, I'm I'm on the fence with that. Here we do have someone who just 
is just straight up explosives. Doesn't even have the torso, nor has the juggernaut torso. For him, how much would that stun gun cost? Uh, where is it? Would he be able to use it for one AP is the question. Action points one. Okay, so that explains it. Because he does not have the torso for one AP. Hence, it would absolutely be wasteful not to use such a loadout here he can he can kill with one AP action points to use two and he does have uh, the torso that uh, shattered realm has the torso the vengeance torso that gives melee proficiency okay so he's the killer <coughs> he on the other hand, also as propeller legs can go there, but the weapon itself makes it that it is one action. So I like it. That's a good combination and we do have another grenadier. Okay, Jeranks. Standard attack, works out well. Has the juggernaut torso, works out well as, uh, as well. And we haven't given him a new class. I'll wait, save some points, give him a second class, and then I think he will also blossom. So far, a bit of a basic, uh, basic bitch in uh, in the in the higher level group, and that's not bad. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Dilly, uh, we want extra ammunition. Never seen him reload more than once with his sniper. It's just not happening. So this here looks like a good compromise. The other sniper isn't bad either. I, I would like to get that other sniper. Laser sniper. 120 damage. 20 damage laser sniper I mean mm, mm, not bad at all and I think this here was the two action point sniper rifle I don't want to build all of uh, that stuff. We're only going with one melee weapon because that's needed in the other group. Uh, he will eventually get his uh, uh, weapon upgrade. Never mind now. And then we do have yet another hybrid, which I think really should look like this. My only uh, regret here is not to take propeller legs because that would be better and faster but at least she's immune to mind uh, control which she was anyways uh, with ignore pain but okay mistakes have happened the question is should we give drinks this year? I think the answer is yes. I've never used the repair kits. And we should have used them because we're always repairing afterwards. But 
But yeah, overall he's fine. Um, in which case, everybody has a melee weapon for one. Some are stunning, some are not. Okay, got you. And his weapon combination actually makes a lot of sense as well. I don't mind it. Paralysis, action points 1, ammo 8. I tell you what, maybe... They were going there and maybe we're actually using paralysis pistols. So we give that to Euler. The question is, is this too much? I mean, here... He would definitely not kill someone, but there is a good chance for paralysis just with the amount of pistol shots that he can, uh, that he can land. He's not needing to heal himself that often. And someone else could heal him, to be fair. Getting him to 200 hit points would be helpful though. Yeah, I think the new setup makes sense. Definitely missing a few classes in that prime team, but we're going to expand the prime team. I, did, I would want to have uh, one Psyker in there for sure. Uh, in a perfect world, it would be a combination of technician and priest, but I think that's not possible. But that would be a dope uh, support character. I would actually like run two of uh, them. That would just be fantastic. But yeah, um, I likely take a technician and a psi operative as uh, the last two. Polly has definitely surprised me uh, with just with the amount of healing. Uh, that he can uh, pull out and inappropriate Murphy just fantastic uh, the Psy Priests are really really good anyways before I start lamenting for too long let's move here bit of trading I think that is a priest. That's another one. want to have a thousand food it's a bit much don't you think but then again I like priests I think we're going to get one more. Research complete. Good, we have quite a few uh, bits of research that we can still do. Need to capture a Triton, need to capture. 
one of these guys, uh, rather with ranged weapons, I suppose. And Mindfragger, Poison Worm would be good. We have not destroyed the Pandorian Citadel, so not happening. Good. I, we've captured some, didn't we? Or have they automatically been sacrificed to the research? I'm just curious. Okay, so wait, um, in terms of manufacturing, bases, born in the USA, does have an archaeology lab, but not a facility, and we wanted to get another fabrication plant anyways. Make it two, because... Construction complete. just because we need it. So, that Manticore will get a priest. We're researching and we need to uh, reinvigorate our troops. For now, we are scanning. I don't know where those new resources are being shown. Good. We do. Oh, here I can see ten captured Pandorians. I have no idea what we're now going to do with them. Uh, yeah, no idea what we're going to do with them. Yeah, wait, 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 we're not just going to jump in there. Trade. Uh, we want food. No. Good, whilst we're on the way. Um, recruits. Oh, here. Oh, fantastic. So we could kill them. Containment. We got a siren. Yeah, we got a siren. Stupid looking warm. And the only thing that we currently can do is kill them. Which of course would defeat the purpose of saving them in the first place. Good. Next up, we're going to do this mission here with our C team. In terms of overall strategy, let's talk about that before I end the mission. So we got all of those probes going, right? Uh, those uh, archaeological probes. Not yet sure if they have detected anything. I mean, we've planted a lot of them. And so far, I at least I haven't seen anything. Maybe I'm missing something, but who knows? Okay, so general plan in order of importance. Number one, I want to get up a US team. So. We already have three people there. We need three more. The next hiring cycle, we're just getting a basic uh, team uh, going. 
soon as we do have a aircraft I'm pretty sure we can hire someone a special class as well for the time being um, we do have sniper heavy and infiltrator so getting another assault and something else would be okay and then a special class and we're fine like that's really okay so we're we're doing okay with that um priority number two i want to start expanding a little bit we need to activate this base so that we can theoretically fly over that would also mean that uh, Frozen Circuit and Born in the USA can help one another, which will be majorly important. Expansion also means uh, I want to get into those mist generators uh, that I haven't really fully understood when or how or if we're getting it, but that should push everything around Mist Haven away. And another kind of uh, a kind of expansion would be to go down here to Phoenix Omega and essentially yeah get uh, Australia going so that is number uh, number two we we will eventually over time capture everyone the A team is doing that but currently we can't even really do much we haven't even uh, an option yet for these mutagens so that's potentially one of these here will give us the breakthrough but the problem is we need to get there we need to get there we need to get there oh there's another structure okay well gotta deal with that as well damn it so once we have the priest this is our next target and this is also our next target so that would be then yet another uh, another target then we do have uh, just many 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 missions that seem a bit overwhelming if your quest look is that full but we're going to as always do them one at a time the good news is it seems that besides the scavenger site and this here oh no now we got the runes what does that mean Now I realize for the first time runes have popped up. Okay. Well, Saiken, what you were saying uh, isn't fully true. Uh, there is still more to explore. Anyways, what I was about to say is good news is the unexplored sites are almost done done uh, it's just uh, really just a matter of getting those runes now I guess maybe they can help us to get that special material but for now I fail to see how this is the most important part um, getting the diplomacy up and getting everybody to helpful that would really be okay um, specifically or very close to that 25% mark which will help us that all of them share all of their bases that's already a huge uh, start they start hating each other which clearly is not cool but yeah what, what are you going to do uh, the world is going to shits and we seem to be the only plausible kind of middle ground faction here that is trying to work on it without an ideology but the game captures that quite uh, nicely uh, the modern times is uh, pretty tainted by ideology so it comes at no surprise that the future might look uh, like that as well we once we make our way here we would have covered the majority i think we need to go via phoenix rd9 in order to even go here i see no other way uh, so our our path would actually be this into this into this into this into this um yeah well 
we'll figure it out. Uh, still 85% of uh, the human population left over. I think we're doing fine, all things considered. Not sure yet. I mean, I'm winning missions, so um, at least the game suggests that things are fine. The one thing that I haven't figured out fully is just how to deal with the resources. It always feels that we have too little of them. Whenever I get something, I need to invest it in order to um, upgrade soldiers. Even now when I'm getting like a soldier that I really want, it costs us 800 food, which is crazy. It's a level one soldier. What are you even talking about? So got to think about that. Second um, question mark is really the vehicles. I get it that they wanted to kind of trade off size of the vehicle versus speed, uh, but come on. I mean, I want 650 speed, and in a perfect world, I want two of these Helios aircrafts. Like, maybe, maybe that works. But then again, it's still five days. We need more production facilities. The Tiamat is simply the easiest solution, but also the one with the least speed. I mean, we're seeing how long that takes. In terms of number of soldiers, we do have four squads at the moment. I think that will be it. I don't foresee it to be much more than that. I need to find a way of how to get, um, of how to maybe shift Tiamat into a different base. Maybe I, maybe, maybe that's not even right, maybe, hmm. So wait a second, Phoenix Point, yeah? Oh, I see. Well, you can... They are not, they are not really bound to any location. Hmm. Hmm, okay, wait. If the aircrafts are not bound to a location, right? And that vehicle bay essentially just allows you to land here and how does the medical bay work exactly all soldiers at the base even assigned to an aircraft will recover for at the base okay the aircraft must be at the base and training facility all soldiers at the base even assigned to an aircraft Mm -hmm. Okay, what I'm thinking about, uh, that just means, depending on where the aircraft lands, um, here you would have a bit of a training facility and a bit of a medical bay, so it's the bare minimum, we get the same here, here you don't need a training facility, here you just need a medical bay. And that was the reason why they weren't uh, regenerating. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. Now I'm, I'm understanding it a little bit better, which also means really we could from now on, once we have more uh, building power, we could just build Heliuses and then let two of the Heliuses fly together. They are fast. You can get an eight man team from A to B. So that's easy. We got one team. This team here is the right size, eight people. This team here is missing something. So when we're now getting the um, the next aircraft 
And really what I'm going to do is I'll build two more Heliuses and get the A-team into a Helios and then put the B-team into two Manticores because both of them are kind of the relevant teams. And I'll station the B-team on the other side of the world, maybe in the US and then in Asia Hmm, how, how do I do that? One in Asia, one in Africa. Maybe we need five teams. Because Asia is in, incredibly large. So what, how would we station our teams? Like this here could be one team. You could, yeah, one, one team for Asia have another team like pretty centrally here almost like in the middle here one down there you could have one here which is fast enough to fly over but also fast enough to take that. One here, one up here, and one in the center of America. That's not a bad selection. So uh, prime team could be here at Phoenix Point. Secondary team could be up here. The prime team would be the fast one with the uh, with the two uh, with the two Heliuses can intercept everything. To have a team up here, you maybe have the slower balloon here that could fly wherever needed. There is also a lot of mist, which they can clear out. And the second team. Eight, man, uh, eight person team would be over here. I like the idea. Uh, that would mean in terms of personal prime team here needs two more people and it's pretty sure that I'll grab JP uh, JP Pauly because I'm impressed with a technician and inappropriate Murphy. So those are potentially the last two that I'm going to add to this uh, team. Then second team here has a bit many berserkers. Uh, we will need to pair them with something else uh, so that they do have an ability to actually shoot. Um, but yeah, other than that, the team here could uh, use the other um, the other psyker. Well, if inappropriate Murphy goes over, it could use the other psyker. Would almost even say could use um, the another technician so that you do have a healer in here as well. It's a good team elsewise. Without uh, going too far off of my thought pattern, can we somehow principle of a new judgment priestly head mutation? That is a fantastic helmet. I like the frenzy. It's just so good. The question is... Out of curiosity... Inappropriate Murphy cannot wear that because he has the screaming hat. Okay, I see. I would like that head, however, in our prime team. He is fast by himself. Yeah, and I think this is just an incredibly 
incredibly good um, ability. I would want to have one of these in all of the teams, I think. It's potentially one that I would pass on to the technician, because uh, that's where it fits the most. But yeah, that's a great helmet. And even has 7 accuracy. One of the best helmets that I've seen so far. Okay, back to the train of thought. So, Prime Team should get uh, those two classes. I think we need the same here with um, Tiamat. I need one more technician. We got this here. I don't even know when we got him, but we still don't have uh, the access to their technology. So I would really like to get that. Um, and then the third team, the one here in Manticore, we'll, we'll just need to build that up from uh, from ground up. I think we're going to be fine, uh, but I'm getting the hang for kind of a well-balanced team. I always like balanced teams more than uh, teams that are just coming in with, uh, with one type uh, of soldier. So we'll, we'll figure it out, guys. We'll figure it out. I rented on long enough. That is my thought process about the next steps and what we want to do. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you definitely thoroughly enjoy uh, the missions here and see you in the next uh, episode. Plus, if you want to do me a solid, think about liking and subscribing. See, see you soon. Bye bye.